What is going on you guys? My name is Josh, also known as Harry Tornado, and my full-time job is selling things on eBay and making YouTube videos about it. And today's video is going to be absolutely packed with content for you guys. I've got 15 or 16 orders that we sold on eBay this past weekend, so of course we have to get all those pulled, packed, and shipped out. I'll take you guys along and show you how I get all that done. And then I've got a few items in my death pile out in the garage that I want to get those listed on Facebook Marketplace today. Hopefully if we get them listed quickly enough, we can actually maybe sell some of them today on Facebook so I can and include those transactions and profits in today's video. Outside of those two things, I have no idea what else I'm going to do in today's video, but I can assure you it's going to be packed with content. Stick around. All right, you guys, so the first thing we have going out today is this pair of Anu men's shoes. These sold for $30 free shipping. I got these at Goodwill for $6.50, so not a ton of profit on these, but uh, they've been listed for like four or five months, so I'm just happy to see them move. These actually sold last week, like Tuesday or Wednesday of last week, but they didn't pay until this weekend. Uh, these will be, I think, right over here, if I remember correctly. Yeah, these Anu, it's, it's a good brand, A-H-N-U. Uh, in pretty good condition. I, I don't know. I just, I feel like if I maybe would have held out for a little bit longer, I probably could have got 40, 45 bucks or so free shipping, but uh, 30 free shipping is not too bad. They should cost like nine bucks to ship. This next item is in the V bin, which is down here, and it is a Bible, a uh, Spanish Bible to be exact. It's like a hardcover. Um, I don't, I don't speak Spanish that wed. Concordance, palabras de Cristo in red. That means uh, words of Jesus in red or something like that. Uh, I got this at Salvation Army, I think for a dollar, and it sold for 15 bucks free shipping. This is gonna go media mail, probably cost about $3 to ship out. Next item we got going out is this pair of New Balance Men's Minimus running shoes. I picked these up at Salvation Army about a month ago for $6.99, I believe, and they sold for 55 bucks free shipping. Very lightweight, should cost about eight or nine bucks to ship out. I think they're right here, yeah. Uh, pretty good sale there. New Balance Minima shoes are pretty good. As long as they're in good condition, they're kind of thin and flexible. So you just want to make sure there's not any major wearing on them. These were in very good condition and sold probably about a week after I listed them. This next item is over here and it is a 35 pound rubber dumbbell. Haley and I went to Walmart the other day looking for weights and we found three of these Batman pajamas. She's keeping two of them uh, for personal use and she said I could sell the third one so this at Walmart was full retail Walmart was like $34.97 or something like that about a dollar per pound and this sold for $70 free shipping it'll probably go in a large flat rate box which should cost about $18 and some change to ship out so pretty good profit margins next up we got some women's ice skates I've had these in uh listed in my eBay store for a couple months maybe like three months I got these at the Goodwill bins that's the like the Goodwill clearance center where you go and buy things by the weight um I think those were probably like four dollars or something based on the weight and these actually sold for forty dollars plus shipping pretty good sale it, you know turning four dollars into forty that's that's a a very good flip in my book again they took about three months to sell I figured they'd start selling around winter time and it's currently like October 27th or 26th or something like that so uh, exactly what I thought would happen with these skates did happen. Next item is in the O bin right here, and it's this Max Lucado uh, DVD-based small group kit. Uh, I got this from an eBay store buyout. One of my friends who also sells on eBay just decided he didn't want to anymore, so I bought pretty much everything he had in his store for like a hundred bucks. Uh, this has been listed for quite a while, probably eight or nine months. I didn't think that this was ever going to sell, honestly. And somebody sent me an offer of ten bucks plus shipping, and I definitely went ahead and accepted that. This actually sold to a viewer named Max. So Max, thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. Next item is in the D bin, and it is uh, pretty interesting, I guess. I really got to get that moose to move out of the way in here. This is a set of like 12, I think to, uh, 10, 10 amber glass spray bottles with nozzles. So they're like spray bottles for people that make their own like essential oil sprays or what have you uh, it comes with the bottles and the lids i got these at the amazon overstock store dream deals on two dollar day i believe uh, so i spent two dollars on this and these sold for 10 bucks plus shipping next item sold is this vintage at&t answering machine that was brand new in the box sealed i picked this up in a video about two weeks ago it was only listed for maybe four or five days before it sold and it sold for 25 bucks free shipping i believe i paid like four bucks for this it's right up here in the b bin uh, I think this was four bucks. Or it was 
I bought the answering machine and a telephone. One was $4 and one was $3. So I don't remember which one was which, but uh, say four bucks into 25 free shipping. It'll probably, I don't know, probably cost like nine bucks or so to ship out nine or 10 bucks. So not too bad. Next item sold is another pair of dumbbells. I'm probably just going to leave them over here, but these are a pair of um, cast iron 12 pound dumbbells. I actually bought these at Salvation Army like a year ago. We've been using them personally in our little home gym until we got the Bowflex adjustable dumbbells. Now we don't need these anymore, uh, except my wife wants to keep the 35 pounders over there. So uh, I think I paid like five bucks, like $2 and 50 cents for each one of these. And they sold the set of two sold for $59 free shipping. And they'll probably be able to fit in a medium flat rate box, which should ship for about 14 or $15. Or if they have to go in a large flat rate box, they'll cost about $18, but either way, making a good amount of profit. Next item that sold is this pot, this cook's club pot that I picked up. Whoops. This cook's club pot that I picked up in my very last video at Salvation Army, I think it was $5.99. Um, it's one of those things that I picked up and decided to list the same day I got it. And I'm really glad I did because it sold over the weekend. I actually sold to a viewer named Tracy. And she says, hi, I'm a viewer from Raleigh, North Carolina. I saw you pick up this pot on the video and I knew I had to buy it. I have one just like it. And it's my favorite pot. I always wanted another one. Thank you for finding it. Tracy bought this pot for $40 free shipping. And since it's just in North Carolina, I'm in South Carolina. So it's probably going to cost like nine or ten bucks to ship it up there to her so tracy thank you so much for your support i hope you enjoy the pot next item is in the d bin this is a clothing item that has been listed for a long long time it's a michigan wolverines women's long sleeve t-shirt i got this at goodwill for probably a dollar and fifty cents and it sold for fourteen dollars plus shipping not too bad on a clothing sale but again it's been listed for a long time probably close to a year or so uh, if not over a year. I think this sold to a viewer, but I don't have a message on the actual thing. So it sold to J and J St. Laurent. That's who that the that's the buyer name. So if you're a viewer of the channel and you bought this, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I feel like I got a message saying that you wanted a shout out or something like that for somebody, but I can't I can't remember and I can't find the message in my eBay messages. So I'm so sorry, but thanks for the support. Just the same. Next item that sold is this John Deere hat. It's kind of bent up a little bit. I need to flatten it out, but uh, just a basic John Deere straw hat. And I feel like I got this at the Goodwill bins, probably for like 25 cents or something very, very cheap. And it sold for $15 plus shipping. Next item that sold is actually right here. This is that new wave uh, infrared oven, the model 20355. I got this new in the box, just an open box at Goodwill for like $16.92 or some, some weird price, 16 or 17 bucks. And this sold for $69 plus shipping. Pretty good sale there. It's one of these items that were just like really big and I didn't really know how to list it because I didn't want to take it out of the box because all the parts and pieces are sealed in plastic and there's styrofoam and everything like that. So on the listing, I didn't take it out of the box. That's the first picture. That is the second picture, third picture and the last picture. So it didn't take it out of the box and it's still sold in like three days, full asking price, 69 bucks plus shipping, not too bad. Next item is in the end bin down here and it's another Bible. I don't really sell Bibles that often. Uh, is that the right one? New American Standard? Yeah, that's the right one. Uh, I don't sell Bibles that often, but I had a bunch of them that I bought from Salvation Army like six months ago and they've just been sitting over there on the table unlisted. And a couple weeks ago, I just went and just listed them and I'm, I'm not, I never, price my Bibles very high. I bought one at an estate sale this past weekend for like five bucks. It's probably worth like 40 or 50. It's like leather bound. It has all the little tabs on the side, great condition, but I don't know. I don't want to like price gouge for Bibles, you know? So I feel like this is a pretty fair price for a Bible. If you go to Lifeway or a Christian bookstore to buy a nice Bible like this, it's going to cost probably 30, 35 bucks. So I feel like it's okay to sell Bibles as long as the people buying them are getting a good deal. You know, I'm not buying it like, I'm not going buying liquidation Bibles like limited edition collector's items and then trying to flip them for three or four times retail. Um, I feel like as long as you're selling Bibles for at the retail price or cheaper than retail price, what somebody else could get them for at a Christian bookstore, it's not it's not bad. But let me know what you think. Drop a comment on this video and let me know. Would you feel okay selling Bibles for a profit? I bought this for a dollar at Salvation Army and again it sold for 15 bucks. So after eBay fees and shipping, I'd probably make like 
eight dollars in profit something like that next item is in the t bin right here and this is another item that i listed in my last video something that i bought and listed the same day it's these two uh cast iron pig bookends look how cute he is or she i don't know but uh these were still got the price tag three dollars and 99 cents if you can see that uh, again cast iron really heavy really heavy duty and these sold to a viewer for $40 free shipping. Since they're so heavy, they'll probably have to go in like a medium flat rate box. It costs about 14 or 15 bucks to ship out, but not too bad. The viewer that bought these was named Philip, and he sent me a message and said, so glad these were still available. My wife loved them when she saw them on your YouTube video. If you cover them on a future video, will you say hi to Kimber and early Merry Christmas? So Kimber, your husband Philip loves you so much. He bought you these two cast iron pig bookends. Early Merry Christmas. I really hope you enjoy them. Next item is in the B bin up here. It's kind of hard to reach, but I believe leave uh, i'm gonna have to pull it down all right so this oh, there's the manual golly i sold this the other day and i had to cancel the sale because i couldn't find it i didn't even think to check the b bin oh man anyway this is uh what sold just now is a set of uh what is this called forever night forever night trilogy dvd set i have all three of them uh not new they're used but cool story about these one of my neighbors posted on our group Facebook page that she had like a big, like one of these plastic bins filled with DVDs and books that she was selling for like 30 bucks or so. And I was like, hey, will you take 20 and I can just come get it like immediately? And she's like, yeah, that's fine. So I went and picked it up. Most of the stuff in there was basically worthless, like, you know, just junk books and DVDs. But I got a few, she had like a series of like Remington Steel or something that was in there and that sold for like $80 and then this series of Night Forever It's like a vampire forever night. What something? I don't know never heard of the show But the complete trilogy right here sold for 40 bucks free shipping and this can probably go media mail uh, And ship for like four or five bucks pretty good profit and the final sale of the day Also, the best sale of the day is this brand new sealed Samsung a 50 cell phone still got the factory seal on there both sides i actually found this at dream deals the amazon overstock store this was six dollars and the best part is that i got two of these for six dollars each i already sold one to one of my followers on instagram for 220 dollars. he said it works great so basically when i got both of the phones they were both sealed new in the box and the first one i opened it up because i wanted to make sure it was unlocked to any carrier i wanted to make sure it was wasn't broken or stolen or anything like that so i opened up the first one i checked the imei number it wasn't stolen it worked with i put my sim card for my phone in in the first one and it worked great um, I, I sold it to the guy on Instagram. He put his SIM card in it. It works great. He's had it for like a month now, no problems. So based off that information and based off the fact that the two phones were identical, except for the serial number, um, I just said, you know, this is a factory sealed phone. I had an identical one just like it. It works great. I haven't opened this yet. If you have any troubles, let me know. So based off that information, it sold last week and the buyer never paid for it. Uh, my store opened up in items an item not paid case it got relisted last night and then it pretty much sold like 10 minutes after it was relisted for 249 dollars free shipping brand new sealed phone hopefully they don't have any issues and hopefully they don't want to return it uh but really really great sale there turning six bucks into 250. all right so we got the pigs packed up they did fit easily into a medium flat rate box so they're going to cost like i just forget what it costs i think it's 14 or 15 bucks to ship that anywhere in the country and it's going to I don't remember. It doesn't matter because it's going to cost the same no matter where it goes in the United States. So 14, 15 bucks on that. And then this is another medium flat rate box. And this is the uh, the 12 pound dumbbells. You can see they fit in here really nice. I put a little bit of packing paper on the bottom. This is the packing paper I use. I get on Amazon. It's like 12 bucks for a roll like that. It works great. I used to use like contractors paper, which was like basically the same stuff but like a three foot roll instead of a 12 inch roll and this is much easier to handle so i just rip off some of it like this and shove it in there for a little bit of padding and protection throw in a little business card and seal it up and it's ready to go i have all my shipping supplies linked in the description of this video but this stuff is awesome again it's like 12 11 or 12 bucks for a whole roll and a roll will last me 
shipping out the amount of items I ship out one this one roll will probably last me two and a half months so very very good value for the money this box is like 16 by 10 by 8 I believe I get it on Amazon it's linked in my description as well and this is that pot that I sold for this I just put a little bit of packing paper at the very bottom put the pot in there took the uh, more packing paper and put it in the pot turn the lid upside down so if you have it like that the little top sticking up and the box won't close put the lid upside down with some packing paper to keep it from rattling around too much and seal the box up and you're ready to go i got everything packed up and ready to go i didn't see anything else that was incredibly interesting that i would bother showing you guys i was surprised about these ice skates when i got them i wasn't sure what box they were going to fit in but they actually fit in this box perfectly this is a 1095 box from uh, usps.com and i just put one in sideways and one in like flipped it and put it in that way and it fit literally perfectly so that was awesome uh the 35 pound dumbbell fit in this box anytime you ship like heavy dumbbells in these large or medium flat rate boxes i use a ton of tape because you definitely don't want your mail carrier or somebody at the post office like lifting and moving these around and then the dumbbell like busts out the bottom of the box so I always do like probably three three or four layers of tape on either side just to make sure it's secure. So now I'm gonna go ahead and print off all the labels and then we can take all this stuff to the post office. So while I'm over here printing out my shipping labels, I came across an interesting tidbit of information I thought I'd share it with you guys. So I'm shipping out my cell phone right here that sold for $249. It weighs over a pound, so it's definitely not gonna go first class. I probably wouldn't ship it first class anyway uh, if it was under a pound just because I think priority gives you a little bit of extra protection. Um, I believe Honestly, I'm not sure what it defaults to. I don't know if it's $50 in insurance or $100 in insurance, but either way, it's not enough. So down here under additional options, I just clicked add additional liability coverage from 426, added ship cover insurance for $249, and that charged me an extra $4.26. That way, if this is lost or stolen or you know whatever something happens where i lose this package and the buyer doesn't get the package then i am covered i'll, I'll be reimbursed for the whole 249 dollars uh that means this package is going to cost me 15 dollars and 11 cents to ship which is kind of expensive but it's a 250 dollar order i think you know paying 15 bucks for that peace of mind is definitely well worth it Here's another interesting situation. This is the Vampire DVD set. It's in an eight, a 10 by eight by six box and it weighs three pounds, five ounces, round up to five ounces. It's gonna cost me $8.80 to ship this priority, which I'm gonna do because media mail would probably cost like five bucks or so, four or five bucks to ship. And it would take probably like an extra week for the customer to get it. So since they already paid $42.40 for the order, you know, an expensive order like that, I'm just gonna go ahead and bump it up and ship it priority so I can get it in two or three days instead of like seven to 10. So uh, media mail, I wouldn't use it on expensive stuff. Just pay the extra two or three bucks and make sure the buyer's happy. And here's the pigs, the pig bookends. They're kind of heavy. They shipped in a medium flat rate box and it's only gonna cost me $12 and 80 cents. I thought it was gonna cost like 15, but I was wrong. All my labels are printed. All the packages are ready to be taken to the post office. So I thought I'd film another financial breakdown of this weekend sales. So I'll show you guys exactly how much profit I take home after all fees and expenses are accounted for. Our total gross sales for this weekend, everything I showed you guys in today's video was $866. After we take out our eBay fees, we're left with $757.75. Then we have to take out our total shipping costs, which for everything in today's video was $168.44. Then we have to take out our total cost of goods sold, which is what I actually spent on everything I sold in today's video. And that amount is roughly $100. As I've said in past videos, I don't keep track of this per item, but roughly say 90 to $110, so about $100 cost of goods sold. All these expenses accounted for leaves us with a total net profit from this weekend's eBay sales of $489.31. As always, I do like to save 25% of this to pay my taxes, which would leave me with an after-tax net profit money in my pocket of $366.89. As I said at the beginning of this video, one of my goals for today would be to list some of these bigger items that I've had sitting in my death pile over here for a few months now, get those listed on Facebook Marketplace because I have a ton of stuff that's really large and big and taking up a ton of space in my garage that I have no plan of selling on eBay. I just need to list it on Facebook Marketplace. I don't know why I haven't done it. I'm just bad <laughs> at being motivated, I guess. So I'm using this video today to get some motivation behind me to get some of these things listed. And I just sat down and listed three things on Facebook that have been sitting here for a couple months and I'll show them to you now. First item is this portable ice maker. I bought this at Goodwill a couple months ago for uh, like $18, 17 or $18 paid up for it, but it should be worth like 75 to hundred bucks on Facebook. But I wanted to move it a little bit faster. So I did list this for $70 
maybe somebody will come along and offer me 50 or 60 and I'll gladly accept that to get this big item out of my garage. Then I listed this Kutime cookware set. I picked this up at the Amazon bin store. I paid six bucks for it. It's a really nice cookware set. It's just, it needs to be put together. Like it has the, the lids here, but the little caps and everything are in there. The handles have to be put on. Um, I thought this was gonna be like a 30 or $40 set on Amazon, but I looked it up, Kutime 10 piece cookware set. And this thing sells for like 80 bucks on Amazon. So I took a picture like this, included the little cover picture right there. And I'm gonna add this little screenshot from Amazon showing the ratings and how much it sells for. And then I listed it for 40 bucks on Facebook. So hopefully that piques someone's interest. I think this would be a great cookware set for you know a student or somebody out on their own for the first time. Hopefully this sells very quickly. And the third and final thing I listed on Facebook Marketplace today are these industrial pipe wall shelves. I also got these at the Amazon bin store, paid six bucks for these, which was a killer deal. I can't find the exact listing for these on Amazon, but I'm assuming these would probably be close to 100 if not over $100 on Amazon because this galvanized pipe is crazy expensive if you buy like the real <laughs> the real ones at Lowe's. I took some photos and measurements of these bad boys and got them listed on Facebook Marketplace. I'm asking $50 for these because they do come with like the wall mounting screws and the drywall anchors and everything, but you don't have the actual wood for the shelf. So you just have to mount it on the wall however long you want it and then find wood to actually make the the three shelves. Uh, so I think 50 bucks is very fair. I'm on the way to the post office and I thought I'd take a quick second to remind you guys that I have started a reselling and YouTube based podcast with my friends Drew from Profit Monsters YouTube channel and Joey from Joey Bada Bing 22. I'm having a blast recording these episodes with these guys and we just released our second episode yesterday, last night. The podcast is called Triple Thrift Podcast. You can find us on YouTube at Triple Thrift Podcast. It's also available on Spotify and it's supposed to be on Google. Google podcast right now, but I haven't been able to find it. I guess there's like a delay and it should be on iTunes uh, or Apple podcast as of like next week, Apple podcasts and iTunes take the longest to get approved. Uh, but if you guys want to go head over to our YouTube channel, I'll have it linked in the description of this video. Uh, be sure to subscribe to that channel. I think we're almost at 300 subscribers and I uh, will do new episodes every week. Each episode is about an hour long. This second episode is a little bit longer than an hour long. Um, but we're just having a blast with it. Drew and I are both full-time resellers and YouTubers, uh, and Joey is a full-time mailman and also a part-time reseller and YouTuber. So the, the podcast is just our perspectives and topics of conversation about reselling and YouTube and everything in between. So if you guys are interested in content like that, again, the second episode in our channel is going to be linked in the description of this video. Head on over there and give us some love. So I just dropped off all the packages at that post office. That is not the closest post office to my house. The one closest to my house is not very reliable. So if I go to the close one, I make sure I stand in line and get all my packages scanned in because I don't trust them. But this one, I've been going there for two years now, ever since I've been selling on eBay. And the people there, they know me, they know my name, they know I have a YouTube channel, they know that my stuff has to be scanned in. And I've never had any problems leaving packages there without getting a receipt. Um, so if I'm willing to drive the extra five or 10 minutes to go to that post office, I can drop it off and not wait in line. But if I'm in a rush or anything, I have to go to the one closest to my house, that's when I have to wait in line and get a receipt. Uh, so my advice to you guys would be to maybe make friends with people at your local post office, let them know what you're doing, let them know that you know, if your packages are not scanned in the day you drop them off, you get a ding on your eBay account and that could affect your livelihood. Um, and just be really nice to them. Give them tips and Christmas or holidays, birthdays, whatever. Um, just take care of them and they'll take care of you. That's pretty much true with any business, but especially with the post office. Oh, forgot my mask. Another good thing about coming to this post office that is kind of out of the way is that it's really close to this Salvation Army family store. And if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know that I generally find some pretty good stuff in this store. They opened up about two hours ago. Usually I try to get here right at 12 when they open. So a little later in the day, it's about two o'clock now, but hopefully there's still some pretty good stuff in here for us to get. Oh, I got a pair of hookahs right here. Hoka One One. Straight bald on the bottom though. $4.99. Not worth it. Okay, so I found these Nike. Uh, I don't know what these are, but I looked up the model number in there. And they're selling for about 40 bucks or so. They're in pretty good condition overall, but the soles are eat up on both sides. So they're $6.99. I'm going to pass. Looking at everything, but not seeing very much at all not much at all 
So that was kind of a bust. It's been a while since I've walked out of this Salvation Army without buying anything, but I guess that's what you get when you don't get here right when they open, so, oh well. All right, so I've decided to come to this Goodwill. It's the one that's like half retail, half Goodwill outlet, just to see if we can find anything to flip today. I'm certainly not hurting for inventory. I have plenty of things at my house that I haven't listed yet, but for the sake of the video, I figured we could go to at least one more thrift store trying to find something good today. Again, it's like 2.30 in the afternoon, so, They've obviously been open a while. The store's already been picked through probably, but you never know. I found some really good stuff. Uh, very recently, I found a Casio keyboard at like 3.30 in the afternoon. It was actually the second time I'd been to this Goodwill that day. So I came at 3.30, found that for like $4.79 and sold it for 150 bucks. So let's head in here and see what we can find. Special on cycling shoes with the clips. That's gonna be a buy for sure. Clemson Nikes, size nine. I'm definitely gonna get those for sure. Air money, are these good? Are these real? I don't know if these are real or not. Pass. Okay. Hello, doing well. How are you? I'm good. It's those two. I don't need a bag. I'll just take them out. Thank you. Enjoy Thank the you. Rest of the day. You too. I appreciate it. So two very solid pairs of shoes in that Goodwill. These were $6.50 each, $13 total even, no sales tax in South Carolina thrift stores. This is a pair of specialized men's cycling shoes with uh, a three strap with the, that thing and the the clips on the bottom. Again, $6.50, these should sell for close to $50 free shipping, something like that. And then this cool pair of Clemson colorway Nike shoes. I'm not sure about the exact age. The model number on these are Let's see, it's a men's size nine, model 749-957102 uh, from 2015. So not as old as I thought they were, but definitely a pretty nice shoe. A little bit, a little, little dirt on there, but nothing a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and some OxyClean can't handle. A little loose string right there, but we can cut that off, no problem. Uh, I'm not sure about the exact value of these, but I'd say... I, I'd say we could get at least 40 bucks plus shipping for these. So like 50 free shipping, I would think. Something something close to that. These are not, you know, the regular Asics or Nike free runs that are going to sell for like 20, 25 bucks. These are both really, really solid pickups for $6.50 each. I'm not going to go to the Goodwill bins today. It's kind of late in the afternoon, so I'm probably not going to find anything anyway. I need to get home. I want to get both of these pairs of shoes cleaned and listed today. I want to keep keep that a trend on my channel. Every time I find something to list on eBay in a video, I want to get it listed in that same video, just as a motivational tool for myself. So I'm gonna head home now, get these shoes cleaned and listed, and I think I might have a package waiting for me at the house I'm super excited about. All right, I'm home. I was gonna list my two shoes, like I said, that I, that I just bought. However, these need a good bit of cleaning, like on the tongues, I have to take all the laces out, probably scrub it with a scrub brush, let it air dry. So I'm gonna clean these but I won't list them yet, but just so I feel a little bit productive, I will list these. These are basically ready to go, and then I'll list another pair of shoes. So like, I bought these probably a month ago. I cleaned them a little bit on the, on the soles. I haven't really scrubbed the bottoms, but those are fine. So I bought two pairs of shoes today, and I'll list two pairs of shoes today, just not the, the, the two pair that I actually bought. Uh, is that cheating? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I'm currently listing those shoes. I just got the pair of Brooks shoes listed, and I just got to do the cycling shoes now. But what I want to point out to you guys is that the package that I'm really excited about is here. But instead of opening it and, and doing what I need to do with that, I have the discipline to get these two pairs of shoes listed. Although the only thing I can think about while listing these shoes is opening that box. Super excited. Just stick around a few more seconds and I'll show you what it is. The dark deed you requested is done, sir. We got the Brooks Ravenna 10 listed for $45 free shipping. And I got the specialized cycling shoes listed for $49 free shipping. Now let's go open that box. As I was sitting here editing today's video, I just got the notification that my cycling shoes I listed yesterday just sold for full asking price 
$49 free shipping. I'm not 100% sure how to open this because it has like these staples in it that I'm trying to pull out which I guess they're coming out, but it's just kind of hard to do. So uh, fast forward until I get this box actually opened. All right, and we have a bull bar for the front of my Forerunner. It looks like that. If you don't know what a bull bar is, it's just like a kind of like a ramrod type thing that bolts onto the front of your car. I've worn it for a while now. I ordered a used one from Amazon two weeks ago, and when it got here, it was it didn't have any instructions. It didn't have the mounting bracket. It didn't have anything it was just a bull bar so i sent that back and bought a new one it was only like a 20 dollars savings between new and used anyway so uh, i don't know what used seller what seller sold that item used on amazon but obviously they had no idea what they were doing so send that back got this one today and now i'm gonna install it now i know that me installing a bull bar on the front of my car has nothing to do with reselling so as i'm working on my car today i'm going to be answering some more of the questions that i've gotten in the comments of my youtube videos first of all i don't want you guys to get the wrong idea I definitely have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just reading the instructions and trying not to mess anything up. Yeah. That's a screw. I just took a screw out of my car. Tight screws, I tell you. Oh, that's three. That's all of them. Whew. Now, we got to mount this there. Or I took everything out. So this first question comes from Dragonfly Lover, and she says, "Not sure you've mentioned in other videos, but wondering how many hours a day you put in, and do you allow yourself regular days off? I get the idea of you get back what you put into it, but on average, I'm curious what kind of time serious resellers put into their business." Thanks, Shelly from Michigan. Shelly, great question. Usually, I wake up around 6:30 or 7, have a cup of coffee, watch some YouTube videos, listen to some podcasts like Triple Thrift Podcast, Episode Two out now, and I slowly get into the work day. Usually, one of the first things I do is. Share Get my orders from the day before sometimes that takes 30 minutes sometimes that, that takes an hour and a half it just depends on how many orders i've shipped out once those are shipped i usually take another break after that maybe have another cup of coffee or just watch a few more youtube videos take the orders to the post office hit a couple thrift stores film my day you know it's it's work i guess if you want to think of it like that but i don't think of it as work because it's fun this is literally what i want to do i've never woken up and be like oh, dang i got a freaking thrift store today I gotta make another dumb youtube video I gotta you know ship out all these orders all this money i'm making it's so annoying i never have that thought because this is my dream job this is what i absolutely love doing that old time saying if you love what you're doing you're never going to work a day in your life yes there's parts of the job that are work you know like listing and cleaning and organizing things i'm not good at that i still have to have the discipline to do but that's just part of the job i don't clock in and clock out of this job i wake up and immediately start thinking about this job i may not start start working immediately but I'm watching YouTube videos from like people like Graham Stephan and, and other people like that that I think help me in my business. I listen to podcasts that help me in my business. I'm Even if I'm just sitting here doing nothing, I'm usually thinking about my business from until the moment I go to sleep. That's the lifestyle of an entrepreneur. But in terms of how many hours I actually work, I don't know. Again, it doesn't feel like work. I guess I would say like six to eight hours a day something like that. Haley usually gets home from her work around four o'clock and then I'll stop what I'm doing, hang out with her for a little bit, and then maybe list some more stuff at night, maybe edit a couple videos or something that night. I, sometimes I don't do anything after that. So I, again, I work as much as I want to, not a second more. But if I had to say, I'd say about six to eight hours a day, five days a week. I don't really work any, do anything on Saturdays and Sundays unless we go to a thrift store or a yard sale or something like that. Uh, but Shelly, great question. So like 50 hours a week, maybe. But if you count all the time I'm thinking about my business, like 100 hours a week, I guess. <laughs> Here's a good question. I literally just got this as a comment like 30 minutes ago. This is from Devil's Advocate. And they say, you are good. Is reselling on eBay still a viable business for beginners? I tried listing DVDs because I collect and have over 600 in my current collection, some unopened, but I listed five and sold none. So after a week, I got bored and quit. Devil's Advocate. Good question. eBay and reselling in general is 100% still a viable option for new people to get into and be successful with it. However, the situation that you've described where you list five things and don't sell anything and then quit is probably what happens to 
over 80% probably of people that start reselling. I think the problem is a lot of people find reselling because they found a YouTube video and it just seems like, oh, Harry Tornado is selling $50 shoes and $250 cell phones that he got for six bucks. And it seems really easy. But what you don't see is that you have to wake up every day at 6.30 and ship everything you sold the day before and list five to 10 things a day to get consistent sales and go to thrift stores two, three times. You know, sometimes I go to thrift stores twice in a single day. That's what I talked about earlier when I found that Casio keyboard. That was the second time that day I had been to that Goodwill and found a $150 keyboard. To to find the good stuff like that that sells for high dollars, you have to get out there and work. Reselling is fun. Again, like I said, it's my dream job, but it's not easy. Uh, you know, 40, 50, 60 hours a week of work. You have to list consistently. You can't just list five DVDs and then get mad when they don't sell and then quit. DVDs are notorious for being very slow sellers. I don't even sell DVDs at all unless they're like, you know, collector's editions that are selling for, you know, 40 or 50 bucks or something like, you know, I sold earlier this morning. Um, but most DVDs are going to sell for two or three bucks free shipping. You, you've got to list things that people actually want to buy. And I think that's a lot of new sellers problems that you're listing things that are just like, random tchotchkes and used DVDs and old kitchen spatulas or something. This is yard sale stuff that nobody wants. You get out there, list your old video games, your extra TV remotes, your extra video game controllers, things like that, that, that there's so many people in the world that actually need that stuff that even though you start reselling and you're brand new on eBay and you don't have any feedback yet, people are still going to buy it. So don't get discouraged when you list five things and don't sell anything. eBay is still... 100% a viable business to start. You just have to realize that it is a very slow marathon. It's a marathon, not a sprint. That's the saying, right? You've got to list, you know, a hundred things before you can start seeing daily sales, in my opinion. Generally, the rule is you're going to sell about 1% of your listed inventory every day, as long as it's desirable items that you're listing. So if you have a hundred items listed in your store, you can expect to sell maybe one item per day. I have like 400 items listed in my store. And I, so I should be selling about four things per day, but viewer sales kind of pad that. So normally I sell maybe five to eight things a day on, on average. And I'm a full-time reseller. So if you've, it's really just how much work you want to put into it, that you, you get out of it, what you put into it. You, you list five things and give up. You're not going to make any money. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes patience. Don't give up. We've got three more screws to take off. Then I got to put the bracket on and then put the three screws back on. And putting the screws back on is the hard part because once you put the bracket on, it takes up a lot of space in here and you just don't have a lot of space to go back and forth with the socket wrench. So hopefully my experience with the passenger side will make the driver's side a tidbit easier. Ice cream trucks driving by. I don't need it. Ice cream van. Ice cream van. I don't need it. I hope none of those songs they're playing will give me a copyright strike on this video. Third bolt out. That's all the bolts. Now we just gotta put the bracket on. All right, that is one secure bracket. Now we just gotta put these brackets on and then we gotta put the actual bull bar on. Well, guys and girls, it only took me about two hours and 15 minutes, something like that, but the bull bar is fully installed and fully functional. It looks pretty cool. I really, really like how it turned out. Tiger, Tiger brand. I like the little metal cutouts there and the, I like the finish of it. It's like not, not shiny like the rest of the car, but nice and rugged. And this thing is, can withstand anything. Can withstand a tornado, that's for sure. All right guys, it is 7.44 and I have a lady here to pick up the ice machine. That's awesome. Let's if you see. don't mind, can I scan your Venmo thing? Yeah, yeah, totally. That way I don't type it in wrong. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, okay. Got it. I can carry it for you. It's kind of heavy. All right, folks. There it is. Paid 50 bucks for the ice machine. I actually listed it on Facebook for 70 and she was like, yeah, I think I like it. I'm like, listen, if you can come get it tonight, I'll give it to you for 50 bucks. And she was like, okay, I'll, I'll come get it. So that was great. We listed the ice machine today. It was listed on eBay on Facebook for, I guess, like six hours or so before I got her message. I had two other people message me asking the whole, is this still available? And of course I responded yes, and they never responded. So 
uh, really happy that we're able to make another same day flip. Fast forward to the very next day and of course we made that Facebook marketplace sale last night and I actually have another person that's going to meet me at 12 o'clock today to buy that set of pots and pans for $35. So I'm going to go ahead and include that in today's video although I'm going to wrap up the video before it actually gets to be that time. But just trust me, I'll put the message on the screen here. I'm meeting him at Bojangles at 12.30 today. I'm really happy with how today's video turned out. I thought it was a very well-rounded vlog. If you guys enjoyed it at all, if you learned anything, be sure to go ahead and hit that like button down below. I'd really appreciate it. It helps me and the channel out a ton. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing to this channel for more content just like this. That's Mose walking into the office as I'm trying to film. I know it. Thank you guys so much for watching. You're the best and we'll catch you on the next one.